Hello, PG Ty Botting here again. Welcome back to Modern Race Basics. Today we're working on circular or compound striking styles, and we'll be going through everything from Harada to Arco to Bobby Log to uh, Duplete, uh, double zero, double zero X, and uh, talk about targeting and, and use. All right, let's start with Harada. We've already introduced you to Harada uh, recently in the last few videos and some other times as well. Harada is just a single stick redonda, so it's a spin in a plane. But one of the neat things about it, if we start with the close side first, if I start from here, whether I was attacking or blocking or whatever, and I drop that arm and let the stick spin, that's going to be Harada. So from the side, I'm here, I drop the arm and it makes, it makes the stick go like a wet towel. Like I'm just going, snap that, west snap that wet towel. Or if you play with a whip or latigo, it's a lot like that. And on the open side, we're going to go from here, we're going to go drop and drop drop and spin. Okay. How we're going to apply it? So if someone had attacked me and I were to block, as soon as they block they've had to extend to try to hit me. I know where they're basically at, right? And they've also given me their their hand that's holding the stick. So what I can do right after I block, as soon as I make that contact, I can drop Harada and hit that hand and then follow it up with whatever I want to do. I can do multiple Haradas there or any other striking stuff. But the same thing as this, that, right? If they come in and attack, I block and drop and hit that hand. And follow up okay if you're doing it uh, because they defended you right I'm doing a back fist strike they as soon as they block again I know where their hand is and I can hit them when we're doing Harada we can play with the ranges right I can go straight for that hand or I can go block and I can close the range and go for the top of the head okay or here we go over, play change the range and go for the collarbone all right so that's a quick look at Harada the other thing to consider about all these is that it's on incidental contact. You feel an opportunity and you do your spin, whether it's Har you know, Harada or any of these other spins we're talking about. The other thing is for, the, for most of them, except for the very end, they're gonna be spinning in the same kind of plane that we're looking at, okay? So whether it's, they're all spinning in the same plane, right? Let's go on to Arco. Arco means arc, arch, circle, um, but my idea is that it's all the way down hitting the ground. The other thing is that you're actually targeting things on the ground. You're targeting toes. You're targeting the fact that you got dirt or debris and you can fling it up in people's eyes. There's a few uh, effects going on in there. You can do that open like this. So we're going to just go one, two, and down to the ground. One, two, down to the ground. Okay. You can do it on the closed side too. One, two, down to the ground. One, two, down to the ground. The way we do that for if they're attacking us, right? Here, attacking all the way down. You're ducking, you're not leaning too, too much, you're squatting, and you're following up. Could stay in the same range, right? So I block and I go for the hand, or go for the toe, and going all down. You can then decide to come in. So say if I block here, I want to do all the way to the ground, so I'm going to go all the way to the ground. So in this case, I'm striking all the way through them, hitting anything that's in the way. And the idea is this, this sink and power is to power that motion, okay? And then, right, maybe I follow up with other things, okay? Remember that a lot of the second hit going down to the ground is to get that commitment, get that power, get that strength all the way through. Sometimes what you can do is you can hit and that second one can hit and jam their weapon to the ground and now it gets shocked when it hits the ground and your follow through then can knock it out of their hands. Okay. The next one we're gonna do is probably lok or bilok, which is circle, it means circle in Tagalog. Um, for me, Bobby Lok is going upwards, okay? So if I were all the way out of the ground, I'm going to spin and spin up. When I spin to go up, I can actually slice like this. I've turned the blade upwards, or I can hit with the tip, okay? Whichever one, the choice is yours. That spin, that wind up, lets you change to a slice or, ch or get the energy to do that upwards some keep. So even if I'm on the other side, I can be low, I'm gonna spin up, I'm gonna go back to the the stick hand side, okay? So attack comes in, I defend, I spin, and I might get underneath the attack, okay? So it doesn't have to start from really low, but the point is it's back spinning coming up, okay? I could even, when the bat attack comes in, I'm gonna wind up and slash under that hand, or under the armpit, or under the elbow. Same thing on this side, it goes here, attack comes up, I'm going to slash, okay? And I might follow up with a, with a caveman strike. That's an attack coming in. What if you're attacking, and then you're gonna follow it, okay? So if I attack here, he blocks it, I get underneath the block, okay? I can then poke, or I can slash, or I can hit, um, and I follow through and do whatever I'm gonna do. 
notice I'm changing my range. So when I do this, I go up, I might stab under the armpit, right? I go up, I might break the elbow. The choice is up to you. But make sure that you vary your ranges, vary your targets, and pick each of those, right? Don't just go, I do a motion. If you don't have a target or a, a use for the motion you're going to do, it's not going to be useful. Okay? The last one where we're talking about the same plane of action for the motion is duplete. Now duplete is my word again for an augmented power stroke followed by the spin. Okay, it could be a diagonal, it could be horizontal. The whole point is I've got a power stroke and I can augment it with the palm on the wrist, palm on the stick, forearm on the stick, shoulder on the stick, however you're going to do it. So if I go diagonal here and I diagonal, I go horizontal and I go horizontal. I go upwards and I go upwards. Let's imagine that they're attacking me again. I'm going to defend, but I'm going to defend full power. So they're attacking me. I'm striking their strike coming in. I'm knocking it aside. Now that it's knocked aside, I immediately come up for the attack. Same thing here. I go power. I knock it to the side and I immediately go for the attack. So in this one, the initial contact is to blast through something and expose something to hit. Okay? Blast through something, expose something to hit. Blast through something, expose something to hit. And that works on the attacker's side. If I'm attacking in four hour, right? There's three things that happen. I'll knock them out, they'll get out of the way, or they'll block. And as soon as they do that, I know where they are. They, they get out of the way, I know they've moved back, and I'm already committed to doing more striking. If they block, they've committed a lot of power ugh, to block that. And as soon as that happens, I know where they are, and I follow up as well, because now they've committed, and it's slowed them down. I've got them committed to doing something. Okay? Whether it's to hold the block, whether it's to manage their distance or their angle, any of those things, or, or you know, as soon as it gets knocked away, I've actually forced them. Any one of those situations, I know that I'm following it immediately with the strike. So that's the nice thing. Okay, for the last one, we're gonna do double zero. Now double zero, when it goes back and forth, can be double zero X, but let's talk about double zero. Double zero is I'm doing a flat strike and a diagonal strike. So I go flat, diagonal. I can go the other direction too. Flat, diagonal. Okay. Now if I do two of those together, watch where it happens on the diagonal. Flat, diagonal, flat, diagonal. Now I've formed an X with those two diagonals and so that's double zero X. Professor loved, loved that one. So one, two. And you can make that all one big striking style. So I combine things. When I use double zero, if I'm defending an incoming strike, it's coming in flat, I go flat, I knock it aside, and I diagonal fit my target. I could change the height a lot. Maybe he's hitting um, uh, number one, number three, and I block it. And now I'm going to hit his hip, his knee, okay? Or I might keep it the same high. I block that, and I go slash down his temple. Same thing on the other side. He might be coming in with a four, right? I go block and diagonal, okay? And again, we follow it up where we want. If I'm attacking with it, I would go horizontal wherever I want to go, and then I'll follow up with whatever the openings give me because he either is going to get hit and I'll get him or he's going to move and react and do something I've already programmed that I'm going to follow in with another attack on a different plane. So now we start getting the flow and maneuver and change your range, change your targets, change your planes of attack. So next we'll go to the wooden dummy and we'll work on those things. All right, before we work uh, with my son here, let's go work on just a few thoughts on a static dummy here. Uh, for each of those striking styles. So the first one, remember, was Harada. So I can do it closed. Whether I do it as a, as after a block, so maybe they come in with this strike here, I block it, I drop and hit that hand really fast, right? I might follow up with whatever I'm following up with. If they came in on this side, right? I might block that and hit that hand, and I might stab right there. Yeah, that's if they're attacking. If I'm attacking then, right, we're sparring, I might go up and I might cover up and I might hit that hand, and I might do several Haradas charge them, right? If I go then to Arco, they come in with an attack here. My initial spin is to, to stop that attack, guide it down, and then I'm going to strike all the way through them to the ground, right? And then I might follow it up with a poke to the groin, solar plexus, up under the armpits, in the throat, in the eyes, whatever I'm doing, or fling the dirt at them and strike anyway. Same thing if I do it on the other side. I hit that incoming strike and I go all the way down to the ground, okay, and then I attack. Simple as that. If I'm attacking them, we're sparring, I just hit one target and another target, 
Okay, that's all that one target and another target. So for Bobby Lok, same thing. I'm, I'm happy to be, I might be low already, right? So I'm gonna wind up and slash that initial hand, or I might wind up and hit that initial hand with a ranking thing, or make it a poke, okay? One more thing on Arco. Say that this is a low strike, right? They're striking at my knee, or this is a low strike. If I knock it all the way down to the ground, okay, that hits the ground and can get jammed, and then I follow it. Now, I like to put Arco and Puppy Loke together so that I go down, boom, okay, and follow up with whatever I'm going to follow up with. So we did uh, Harada, Arco, Puppy Loke, Duplete. So as a defender, he's coming in with an attack here. I'm going to block the heck out of that, knock it to the side, and follow it up with a, a, another circle. I'm already committed to do two things. I augment and do another one really fast. Augment, do another one really fast. Okay. Both of them are very good power. The first one is the most power, and then I take advantage of speed because I already know that I'm going to do it, and I already know that either they're going to resist so they'll be slower, or they're knocked to the side. If I make an attack, so we're sparring, and I just knock, I knock whatever's in my way out of the way and follow it up. So it's a good closing one. I, I knock whatever's in the way, hit the head. Knock whatever's in the way, hit the floating wrist. Okay? Next we got the double zero. So double zero, remember, is a horizontal and a diagonal. If they are coming in, right? Come in with a horizontal strike, I block it horizontally and I go diagonal and hit that knee, right? They came in with this horizontal strike, I block it horizontally and I hit that hip, okay? Or hit those floating ribs. Or I hit the other shoulder diagonally. It doesn't really matter. I could actually block it horizontally here and hit diagonally to that temple. Down. If I'm attacking them, I go in, they block. That's great. They block my horizontal strike and that's good to change my angle on them, right? I, I do this horizontal number four strike. He blocks and gets committed there. So he's on that plane. As I spin and I go for that temple, then I'm happy. But I have to close the distance. I have to make sure I manage my distance. All right, so now we're out here. I've got my son Connell again. We're just going to use him for some quick targeting ideas. Most of the thing to remember with these spinning things and these compound is that the first one gets them to do something and you immediately hit them. So we're not going to do a lot of shoving around. We're just going to be showing how that sets up the commitment from the reaction. So if he, he attacks me and I defend and then I go to Rada, we'll start with that one and then we'll do the opposite. So he comes in with a forehand strike and I block and I immediately know where he is. So while this is here, I immediately then drop the stick and hit that hand. Okay, so it goes here, one, wham, and I hit that hand. Um, same thing on the other side, he comes at me, I block, and I immediately spin and hit that hand. Okay? So now if, if I change my uh, response and my distance while I'm blocking, then I can hit not just the hand, I can hit other targets. So if he comes with the backhand strike again, I block, and, and I hit right away. So I can hit the head, I can hit the shoulder, I can hit the wrist, but I'm not going straight to the hand. So on the other side, he does the same thing. I block, and if I don't move, I immediately hit the hand. If I block and I move, I can hit the inside of that forearm, I can hit the temple, so movement is important as far as choosing your target. So you can't just go, I'm going to reach all the targets. You always have to move your body. Now, you don't want to do this. You don't want to go like this. I want to hit his head and reach. Okay, because now I'm overcommitted and that's bad. So what I did was I moved. I blocked and I shuffled in and hit it. Okay, I maintained this control just to your case. And I might grab there. But the idea is I shuffled my whole body in. I'll do one more on the other side. So with Harada, he comes on the backhand strike. And remember on this one, I do the fast inside Harada. So stay there. I do this and I drop immediately. So I go here, drop that hand. Same thing happens if he comes into the strike and I change my distance, my harada is now to the head, temple, whatever, or even the front of the shoulder or the forearm, whatever I want to destroy, but I had to move. Okay. All right, now with uh, Arco, what we're gonna do on this one, he's gonna do a low strike. Remember with a low strike, he might come in and strike. Nice and low, I'm gonna hit it to the ground on the initial one and follow up with a strike just like we did with the harada, but now I'm doing um, knocking the stick into the ground first. Okay. So he comes in, I go, pow, and I immediately hit. Okay. I could stay there, right? I get out of the way, I, I drop this down and hit that hand. And I can do some multiple circles. Let's go ahead and build a scenario here. He's going to recover at that get stick getting knocked on the ground and try to poke me. And then that's when I'll use my puppy look. So he comes in low, I knock it down the ground, I start recording, and then I knock and do the puppy look. Boom. So I strike the eye, strike in there strike the groin, strike the floating ribs, whatever I want to do with that poke. And remember, I can do that with my poke as well. All right, another application of that strike all the way to the ground, he strikes in low, I go down, 
I hit the ground, I fling the dirt in his face. I might even not make that poke, right? I might even just make that as a control and a throw when they hit it, okay? Whatever you're gonna do. So then we have duplete. So duplete, if he comes in to strike, and knock it to the side, boom, like that, then I strike again, okay? Same thing on this side. I need it and do my spin, okay? Now, what I like it is the other thing. If I'm tacking with duplete, it makes him commit it. So if I duplete on this side and he blocks it, I go here. I do push, he blocks, he's committed. Now he's committed, I know exactly where he's at because he had to fight that. Okay. Lastly, um, double zero X. So double zero X, I love this one. So he comes in with a nice good strike. Thing. I block here, I boom, I strike the head and I strike. So now I've done double zero X because I did flat, diagonal, flat, diagonal as my whole response. Doesn't matter which side he attacks from, right? I just go here, one, and a diagonal, right? And then I could go here and strike. All right, hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time. Keep an eye out for the next video. Weekly they're coming out, so thanks for watching. Um, if you liked it, please subscribe, like, share, all of those good things, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.